I'd like to begin by telling you a few stories about attitudes to burial in 13th century Iceland. Uh, the first one comes from the north, and in 1199 there was a chieftain uh, at this farm here, Baki, uh, who had some enemies who hated him very much, and uh, they uh, sent a war party to uh, besiege his, his farm. Uh, the siege failed, and the attackers left three of their uh, 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 own dead uh, in front of the farm. So, so when they came out, the, 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 the people who had been uh, uh, besieged within the farm, they had sort of three corpses on their, on their hands, which they had to do something with. And uh, one of those uh, dead guys was uh, a local from this farm here. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, by Isar, which uh, uh, and, and the, the besieged farm is, is, is a parish or had a parish church and, and the, the, this local guy he also came from a farm with a, with a parish church but he was in fact buried at this place Mörvöldli which uh, probably was the, the most important church in the, in the, in the area uh, and uh, later on in the 13th century became a house of, a house of canons uh, uh, the other two guys who were lying there dead, uh, one of them was from Skagafjöldi, which is the neighboring region, uh, that's where Guðni comes from, and, uh, and we are told that he was a criminal. And of, uh, according to uh, 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 Icelandic law at the time, if you are a convicted criminal, you, you don't get to be buried in, in consecrated ground. Uh, so that was the reason they, they dragged his corpse uphill and just left him there and piled a few rocks on, on, on top. The third one, however, uh, we are only told uh, that he came from the south, which is a, sort of a very different part of the country, and he was also given the same treatment. So his only crime seems to have been that he was not a local uh, person, nobody knew him, so who cares. Uh, so this tells us something uh, about uh, attitudes to, to burial, uh, and uh, where you're supposed to be buried, and uh, uh, who gets to be buried in, in uh, proper places. Uh, two other stories come from, from the west uh, part of Iceland. In 1232, a chieftain living in this farm here, Sjöldafell, ambushed uh, two of his uh, rivals who were, who were attempting to ride through and uh, had them executed here at this place. And uh, so he also had <coughs> corpses on his hands, which he had to do something with. And so he asked his client uh, a minor chieftain at this farm, which was also had the parish church. He, he had his own parish church, this chieftain, so he could have taken his enemies and put them in, in, into his cemetery, but he obviously didn't want to. And he asked this guy to, uh, to take the corpses off his hand and bury them. And he said, no, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm, I'm afraid of ghosts. And uh, uh, so a third one, also a, a client, also with his own parish church, uh, stepped in and said, I'll, I'll do it, I'll take them. And uh, the, the major chief then, he was not impressed by this and said, okay, you do that, but uh, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't start calling them saints. <coughs> so so uh, 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 he didn't appreciate the, the gesture, uh, we are told. Uh, <laughs> these, the, the two decapitated chieftains uh, were from the northwest, some, some uh, 400 kilometers uh, away. Their relatives, this was in the autumn, in the spring, they turned up and asked for those bodies and took them back. To, to Vaskerder, where they, where they came from. And, uh, and it is said that, uh, well, the, 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 uh, the chronicle says that uh, this showed you know, how greatly those, those characters were, were loved by their, their, their family. And so this was obviously seemed to be a, a nice thing to do. Uh, in 1257, uh, yet another chieftain, relative of this guy over here, uh, was, was riding through. This is the part where, where people do a lot of riding through. And uh, there was an accident. One of his retainers uh, fell into the river and drowned. And uh, <laughs> so, and this happened around up here, where there's uh, yet another parish church. And they are very thick on the ground, and I, I, I in this area. And uh, I hope you, you well, draw your attention to that. And uh, uh, so the chief then went to the to, to the farmer there and, and asked him to uh, uh, take on the the corpse, put them, put it in his cemetery. And he said, mm, okay, maybe. And, and, and then he sort of, the, 
uh, the, the chief then said, "Oh, I'll, I'll pay you sixfold what, what you normally get from from for, for burying a corpse," and he, he accepted. And uh, <laughs> uh, so we are not really told if, if that was sort of the clincher or whether he just did it out of his sort of magnanimity. But it was cl it, it's clear from the context that it was not. Uh, 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 Something you could necessarily expect from a, a, a church owner that they they expect that they accept uh, a, a, an unknown person into their into their cemetery. And from the from the beginning of the 14th century, we go up again up to the north, and, uh, uh, and we have we have glorious detail about the case where uh, the the then uh, parish chair, parish priest here at Bayesau, uh, 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 complained to the bishop about a, a very rich parishioner of his who had uh, uh, his, his wife had died and he took the, the corpse to, uh, to a monastery far away and had it buried there and, and gave lots of money to the, to the monastery and the, the, uh, the, 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 the priest of Baeso felt cheated of, of this money of course but the, 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 uh, uh, the, the case turns around the, his right to uh, uh, bury the, the, that particular corpse it was a parishioner. She should have been uh, buried in the in, in the parish cemetery. He, he, he maintained, and uh, uh, in in the end, uh, she was allowed to to uh, uh, stay in Munkathero, this this uh, rich monastery outside this area. Uh, but the, the the parish priest was given a little bit of money to uh, to uh, make this hurt less. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, this is in the 13th century, and uh, some of these attitudes uh, clearly contradict uh, what we would expect from reading the laws, uh, uh, laws of, uh, of Iceland current at the time, and also, of course, general, general church law. Uh, and there is, of course, a background to this. There, there had been, in the previous uh, 300 years, uh, uh, quite substantial uh, changes in, in burial custom in Iceland, and some of you already heard uh, uh, some of that here. In the 10th century, before the introduction of Christianity, uh, uh, all farms, it seems, had their own uh, cemetery. Uh, sometimes in multiple, they had, sometimes they had more than one. Uh, there were multiple lo locations in, in, in a few, ex few examples. And uh, uh, the most clearly apparent uh, uh, side to this is uh, sort of furnished burials which are found outside home fields. Uh, so like in, in, in this case here, this is the, the home field of Ingerida Stadir, and uh, well, there's, a, there's a longhouse here, but the, and the later farm on here, and here is a, a, a large pre-Christian cemetery. It's not that far away, but it is very clearly outside. Uh, here in Kattetalur, this is uh, Uni's work, uh, here's the farm, and here's a pre-Christian uh, cemetery, uh, you know, pretty much sort of halfway between between these two farms, and this is a very typical kind of uh, location. So you either have them just outside the the, the, the home field or or on the boundary between between neighbouring uh, uh, farms. And uh, 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 because a farm can have boundaries with more than one another, you can you can you can expect them to to in, in several locations. And like Hilda mentioned, these these pagan cemeteries tend to be very small. Uh, three is, is quite typical here in Kattetalur. In Kiriyastad, is one of the, the biggest ones, more than, more than ten. <laughs> uh, 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 we have recent evidence suggesting that there, there, are, uh, there are also unfurnished graves from the 10th century inside the, the, the home fields. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll not uh, uh, dwell on that, but that's, a, that's an interesting development. Uh, in the 11th century, uh, we, we get all these chapels and or small churches, which uh, we have been uh, talking about, and, and Guni in particular was uh, explaining about. Uh, in some of these sites, we have them like in Kevin uh, So this is the, presumably the earlier site, and then uh, a Christian cemetery is built uh, home by the farm. Same happens here in Ingevjallstad, presumably. Uh, uh, there's only been very limited trial trenching into the what looks like a, a, a small church ruin uh, besides the, the farm mount. Uh, no burials have been found there yet, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can remedy that. Uh, <laughs> and here's a third example uh, of uh, Nerjaus, which is also in Skagafjörður, where there's a farm mount, and, and here the, the Christian cemetery is, is just inside the, the, the home field. Uh, <laughs> the, the, so there's a locational difference 
Uh, but there's also a difference in numbers. So in, in the, in the pre-Christian burial paradigm, if you like, uh, there, seem, there are cemeteries associated with every single farm. In the, in the 11th century, uh, there are lots and lots and lots of these small churches, but they are nevertheless not associated with every single farm, probably around a half. Uh, that's still a lot, uh, but it is, it is in, nevertheless a big change in, in, in the sort of burial landscape. Uh, and, and like Winnie uh, has shown, uh, there is already by 1100 a reduction in the number of these, these uh, small churches. A number of them are already going out of use, at least the cemeteries, uh, before 1100. And it seems, and, and this is still something that we, we don't have a very clear handle on, uh, there was, a, uh, there was a, a continued reduction in numbers. And uh, whether it is a steady attrition or, uh, uh, or whether it's happening in leaps and bounds, we don't really know. Uh, but, uh, but by the 14th century, when we have good uh, 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 historical records, uh, there are still probably around uh, 1,500 uh, uh, of these small churches in the, in the country. Uh, uh, so, so, so we have this reduction, but we also at the same time in the 12th century, we have the, the formation of a parish system whereby, and this is similar to what we heard from, from Orkney, uh, whereby certain churches, much fewer, uh, became, become designated as parish centres, and uh, begin to acquire certain rights and, uh, and, and, and seem to be, be, uh, begin to become focus of, of, of burial from uh, multiple uh, uh, farms. And, but this happens quite gradually. So uh, uh, we, we can begin to talk about parish churches in the 12th century, but it's really only the 14th century that they have the full set of rights that you would normally associate with those kinds of churches. And, and some rights, which are uh, uh, very apparent in, in other countries, like the, the right to baptize, was, was never uh, uh, granted exclusively to parish churches in, in, in Iceland. Uh, <laughs> so, and there are records from the 12th and 13th centuries where, where church owners are given uh, permission by the bishops to uh, limit the, the uh, uh, burial in their cemeteries. So they have a right to bury, but it's, it's limited to household members. That's the most, most common. Uh, formulation, but there are. But there are also sometimes they they take on responsibility for uh, 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 burying everyone who dies within the property or, or, or things like that. There are a number of, of uh, variations on, on, on this, but it, it's clear that it is. Uh, uh, and, and I think the, the stories I was telling you earlier they, they underpin that uh, uh, it was not a, it was not uh, generally accepted that you you should. Uh, 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 accept people you don't know into your, your cemetery. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it was necessary also in the 13th century to legislate that the commune, the district, uh, an association of uh, 20 or more farms was responsible for burying those people with, uh, who died who, or, or who, who were from the commune uh, and, and who died with, within its, its, its borders. Uh, the, 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 the commune was responsible to find some place within the, the, the uh, uh, within the commune to, to uh, uh, bury them. And it's quite interesting that it's not the church that, th that takes on this responsibility, but the secular uh, administration. Mm -hmm. So here's a, uh, just a graph showing the, the, my estimates of the, the number of cemeteries in, in Iceland. This is mainly based on, on, on counting evidence for churches. And, uh, and as relatively recent uh, excavations have shown, uh, it, it seems that the, the, uh, the burial function uh, is, is dropping off much earlier in many cases than the, than the, than the use of the church. So uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in, in Skagafjörður at least, it, it seems that in, at least in some cases people are, st are stopping to use these, these cemeteries uh, uh, before 1100 or very shortly after, but the, 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 the structures remain and are in use possibly until the 13th, 14th uh, century. Uh, but uh, uh, by this time, by the 16th century, we have, we have firm, firm figures. Uh, so, uh, Willie talked about, about sort of segregation and uh, how the, the population is, is being divided up and, and the, uh, in, in within these, these Christian cemeteries. Uh, uh, the, the, the pagan <coughs> burial paradigm seems to divide the population between 
significant and insignificant persons. The significant persons are people who, who, who get grave goods, and, uh, which is usually the reason we find them, and, uh, whereas the insignificant persons are people who are buried without them, which usually means that we don't find their, their, their uh, graves. But the, uh, uh, there's no other distinction uh, that it is possible to make within this uh, burial system. Uh, uh, it seems, and, and of course we don't know this for a fact, but it, it, there's nothing uh, to suggest otherwise that uh, people were just buried on the farm which they belonged to in some sense, whether they were just because they were born there or, or because they lived there. Uh, <laughs> uh, with, with the Christian cemeteries, there's a big change in, 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 in these kinds of uh, associations. Uh, it, it, under that paradigm, everyone is buried equally, uh, although there are some there are differences between the between the, the sexes and, and age and so on with the, within the cemetery, but it's a it's a much more muted kind of uh, uh, segregation system than, than the earlier one. But there's a, there's a difference in that uh, uh, some part of the population no longer has uh, a cemetery associated with the farm they live on. They have to bury their dead at the neighbouring farm. Uh, <laughs> in in the 12th to 15th centuries. And this is the period where, where we don't really have as, as good a handle of what was happening as before. Uh, it, it, it's clear that, clear that parish cemeteries are, bec are becoming the norm. We would, we would dearly like to know uh, more about how this is happening in, in, in detail. Uh, <laughs> uh, there are some non-parish cemeteries still in operation uh, down to the 16th and 17th centuries. Um, and they become clearly more and more exclusive. They, they tend to be associated, at least by the 14th and 15th centuries, with uh, very high status uh, people. Uh, but also, you see, and, and the, the, the anecdote from, from 1308 that I, I, I talked about earlier is, is in fact the earliest uh, evidence for, for this kind of behavior. The elite also starts to seek burial in uh, at church centers, so sort of completely outside the, the, the parish uh, system to underline uh, their distinction, their, their difference uh, from, from ordinary, ordinary people. Uh, <laughs> in, in the 16th and 19th centuries, uh, there are even fewer and larger parish cemeteries, and, but, and, and you start to get uh, evidence for exclu exclusivity being, being created by grave markers, the earliest ones are from the 14th century, and more commonly sort of memorial plaques within, within, the, within the churches. Uh, I think the, well, I'll, I, I'd like to suggest, uh, and this of course is just a hypothesis, that uh, uh, these, the, these 13th century attitudes I began by explaining, they do suggest that people uh, uh, believed, even in the 13th century, after 200 years of, of Christianity, they still believed in the continued presence in some way of the dead people, that the dead person didn't just go to heaven and, and that the, what you did with the, with the body was just a, a very minor issue. It was, it was still a, an issue, and, uh, and you better uh, really die uh, where, where your family was around to, uh, uh, to make sure that you got a proper, proper burial, and people didn't want to uh, accept uh, strangers into their, into their cemeteries. Uh, <coughs> uh, but clearly, uh, over time, community is replacing sort of the household uh, or family as the, the burial group, as the, as the group which it is natural to be buried uh, within. And, and this seems to be a very gradual kind of, kind of process. Uh, you could see this as, as indicating sort of increased social cohesion. That uh, uh, the, the, uh, in the 10th century, the, 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 uh, the basic and possibly only significant social unit is just the household, and that people have very limited uh, dealings with, the, with each other. But that by the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries, uh, it is the, the local community which is the most significant uh, 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 social unit people people will belong to. Uh, <laughs> that's possible, and I, I think that there's, there's something in that. But I, I think also uh, we, we can see in this uh, 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 a development whereby people have uh, different ways to, uh, to underline the sort of, or where rather the elite has, has different ways to underline their uh, the, the, the difference between them and, and uh, uh, others. And in the end, at least. Uh, uh, they they end up with with uh, a greater chance to to uh, underline their their exclusivity as a, as a very small group at the top of top of society. In the in the tenth century, uh, even the greatest chieftains, uh, well, all they could do was to be buried on their own uh, farmland. So so that, so in in that sense, they were no different from from anyone else. 
Uh, yes, they could uh, uh, pile on the weapons and stuff into the into the, into the graves, but the, the location uh, there, was, there was a there was a clear upper limit to to uh, the exclusivity of, of, of that by the 15th 16th centuries or 14th 15th. Uh, uh, you could you could uh, uh, use your wealth to buy a a resting place within a, a cathedral or a, or a monastic uh, a church. Uh, which tells everyone that you belong to the top 1% uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the country. And that, at least, is, is uh, uh, a definite outcome of this uh, uh, development. Thank you. <laughs>